now in this video let's see what is direct pulp capping right so direct pulp capping so it indicates that when there is either mechanical or traumatic pulp exposure less than 1 mm in diameter then we can go for placement of a biocompatible material such as calcium hydroxide on the exposed site provided there are certain criteria to be met so let's see what is direct pulp capping its indications contraindications and the procedure and the factors which are very important to consider direct pulp capping as success right so first let's see the various indications of direct pulp capping so the first and foremost is when there is mechanical exposure of pulp which is less than 1 mm in diameter so in those cases direct pulp capping is indicated and also when the bleeding is light in color and is readily controllable only then we proceed with direct pulp capping and in cases of traumatic injuries to teeth or tooth provided the area has to be maintained dry clean and should be reported to the dentist within 24 hours so only in these cases we indicate direct pulp capping and there are n number of cases where it is contraindicated so let's see various contraindications so pulp capping is contraindicated when there is pain or when there is pulpal inflammation or when there is mobility of tooth or when there is thickening of PDL as observed in radiograph or any intraradicular radiolucencies, furcation involvements or periapical radiolucencies etc. So in those cases pulp capping is contraindicated, the direct pulp capping and most importantly direct pulp capping is not indicated in primary tooth because of poorer prognosis there can be either inflammation of pulp or necrosis calcifications or resorptions or even intraradicular radiolucences right so because of these drawbacks usually direct pulp capping is not advised in primary teeth coming to the procedure as discussed previously in case of your indirect pulp capping we have certain criteria for direct pulp capping for example consider this as a tooth and the inner one as pulp cavity so while preparing a cavity or during the procedure of caries excavation there can be a mechanical exposure of pulp or in case of trauma there can be exposure of pulp and if this pulpal exposure is less than 1 mm approximately or a pinpoint exposure in other words we can go for direct pulp capping so for that as discussed previously pulp has to be maintained vital and most importantly we should isolate the entire tooth from the oral cavity using a rubber dam anesthetize the tooth and the first and foremost thing that has to be done is to control bleeding so control bleeding and also make sure that there is no blood clot formation because once there is blood clot formation the moment you place a biocompatible material it is not going to come in touch with your vital pulp so there shouldn't be any blood clot formation and the biocompatible materials such as calcium hydroxide should be in direct touch with your vital pulp tissue so that there can be reparative or tertiary dentin formation right so once you place a biocompatible material and then restore the tooth with a permanent restorative material it can be either an amalgam or composite or uh, intermediate restorative material right or a resin inter, uh, resin reinforced zinc oxide eugenol so once this procedure is completed as discussed in direct pulp capping this 
direct pulp capping can be considered successful when the pulp vitality is maintained when there is secondary sorry tertiary or reparative dentin formation or when there are no post treatment symptoms such as pain swelling resorption or any periapical changes radiographically so in such a scenario we consider direct pulp capping as success however one important point to be noted here is when there is pulpal exposure along the axial wall during a cavity prep or either because of trauma usually when there is pulpal exposure along the axial wall the pulpal tissue which is present coronal to this exposure is devoid of blood supply eventually undergoes inflammation and necrosis so in these cases it is advisable to go for either pulpotomy or pulpectomy rather than direct pulp capping right please keep that in mind okay and then the objectives of direct pulp capping are similar to that of your indirect pulp capping right one of the most important objective is to maintain vitality and to minimize inflammation of pulp and to allow deposition of tertiary dentin right the objectives of direct pulp capping are more or less the same as that of your indirect pulp capping however we consider direct pulp capping a success only when there is no post treatment continuation of symptoms like pain or inflammation and when there is reduced inflammation with deposition of tertiary dentin when observed radiographically right so to summarize direct pulp capping is a procedure where we directly place a biocompatible material such as calcium hydroxide over an exposed site and it's indicated in case of mechanical exposures bleeding which is light in case of traumatic injuries reported within 24 hours and is contraindicated when there is pain pulpal inflammation and mobility or intraradicular radiolucencies and the objectives of direct pulp capping are to maintain the vitality of pulp to reduce the inflammation of pulp and to make sure that there is pulpal response in the form of tertiary dentin formation right and the clinical procedure as discussed should have a proper coronal seal in order to prevent contamination of the exposed site right so this is about direct pulp capping